Well, welcome guys to another one-on-one -on -one with Afropolitan Magazine. I'm your host, Kezia Makundu, and today we are having as guest Camilo straight from Ghana. Camilo, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing? Good. Did I pronounce your, your name correctly? Yep. What are you say? Camido, 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 anyhow. Anyhow. I love it. You love it. All yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, I like it. You make yeah. it easy for me. Yeah. <laughs> How's New York treating you? Um, so far, so good. So far, so good? Yeah. All right. So um, without further ado, let's get started. So can you, I want to ask you a little bit of questions about, you know, your, your, your background back home. So how was, you know, uh, life growing up in, how do you pronounce that? Aflawo? Yeah, Aflawo. Aflawo in Ghana. Yeah. Can you explain us a little bit, you know, growing up there, how was, uh, how was it? Yeah, um, Aflawo is like, we share a border with Togo. Togo, okay. Yeah, so it's like a border town. Um, it's just, I don't know, I feel like I, I love it so much because of how it allows us to just be free. It's like free, like we're just free kids. Whatever you want to do, you go for it, you know. And it's not really being like developed, but we like it like that. Okay, it's like so... it's not really so much like of um, um, infrastructure, whatever. Like we just have the main... Still now? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. You know, but we like it like that. It's like, that's how we like so it in a town. It's very rural. Still. Yes, okay. pretty much. Okay. You know, but it has its effect on us, the kids. You know, it, you grow up to become a real hustler. You grow up to just be a go-getter. That's, you know, it's like, this is the place where you have to make it out go out there and still represent okay. you know so i haven't really like spent all my life there because okay. like my mom was a teacher in ola girls senior high school which is in ho which is like near the regional capital okay. right so we moved from there you know i was in ho and um, i grew up in like it was like a bungalow it's like a girl school so i was like i see these girls every day oh my god <laughs> so before it was like my big sisters right okay because i was small <laughs> and then yeah, and we then got I, in trouble. And, and then I started growing, you know. So um, it, so from a flower, having that mentality is like, yeah, I'm a bad boy, you know. <laughs> yeah, this is like this is a bad boy, and it's like he knows he's young, but he he's kind of like aware of everything going on. He knows, on, you know. So when when I got to a lot of girls, and it's like, oh, he's so cute. I'm like, bro, you got you got to be careful what you're saying, <laughs> you know. So, but yeah, basically that's just how. I grew up, I grew up around these ladies, um, seeing these people like come back from classes every time my mom dealing with them. Mm -hmm. So it's more about like, I grew up in a, in a society of like, you have to respect, you have to, respect you have to like this, there's this like, um, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like, um, senior, junior kind of like relationship. Like a hierarchy, you know, yes. Like a hierarchy yeah, yeah. where it's like, you now go through a system where once you are a junior yeah. and you have to serve. Yeah. And then another time you were going to be a senior, and let's see how you're going to treat the, the juniors, you know. So <laughs> yeah, I, I'm pretty heavy on like um, hierarchy okay. and respect and serving. I feel like know. it's you know, I guess us being African is very much into our culture to you know yes. respect your elders, respect yes. your you know your older brothers, you yes. know your aunts, your aunties. So yes. I, I get I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, growing up, you know, in Afla so over there, like, where were your, you know, your first, you know, music influence when you grew, when you grew up? I don't really think I had, like, musical influences from okay. Aplau. It was not really from there. That place was more of the beach. Like, that place was more of, like, spending time in the sand, you know, running around, playing with my friends, my, these kids. Like, we, we had, like, a lot of freedom. You know, you wake up and you have breakfast and... <laughs> I, need, I need to live that life. Like... You know, it's like... <laughs> We just go out there and just do whatever. So I guess my question is where your, where are your, your early music influence coming from then? I don't even think I had early music influences at that time. It started when I kind of like um, finished junior high school. And a cousin of mine, who's like a family friend, you know, it's a family friend, not a cousin. But it's like we, we became so close that we're like, you know, cousins. And he like, he, he loved me so much. He, take, he takes me everywhere he goes, you know, and... I think he was really keen on just like helping me see society like okay how things are going around so he takes me to like school when he's going for extra classes and it's a shock he's really like brilliant right now he's a doctor oh you okay know? and he takes me to the school he takes me to the internet cafe so one time he took me to the internet cafe to submit at that time we were using diskettes not diskettes oh yeah. trust me i know yeah so <laughs> he, he 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 just got me like a time on like another workstation yeah and he said you know what let me play something on youtube for you while you wait for me to, to, do to the submit work. my yeah. work and he played me acorn 
Oh, and I'm locked up. They won't let me that's out. That's it. That's it. <laughs> he played Acorn. He played um, yeah, locked mm -hmm. up stuff like that. Um, don't matter. Okay. That's what made me fall in love with music. Okay. Yeah. And that's then where so it started. you're talking about falling in love with music. So when when you when did you realize that music was going to be actually your career? Um. I realized music was going to be my career from SHS, like when I was in high school in Bishop Herman College. Mm -hmm. That's when I realized, because prior to that, um, I took, I took um, one time, I went on vacation in, uh, in Accra. Okay. And you know when you're in Aflawa and all of these places, you don't get to see the planes because they don't drop altitude. Okay. They're like far away from that, like the, the airport. So they don't drop altitude like that. So you don't, you don't get to see them. But when I came to Accra, I started seeing the planes. Like, there was this loud sound every morning, every afternoon, whatever. It's just like, I come out and I see them and I just started getting very fascinated. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I wanted to become a pilot. Oh, wow. Okay. And from Aflau, I always just knew I was going to be rich. So it's like, I'm telling like my the cousins way you think. in Keta and Aflau, it's like, I'm going to be so rich. I'm going to be sleeping on a very big ma um, mattress full of money. And, and they're like, this guy, where, where does he get all of these, you know... <laughs> stuff These to ideas. say because we're actually not like that rich yeah we come from like a very like opposite affluence do you know what i'm saying and it was super crazy so it's like for me to even be dreaming this big and saying things into existence like just speaking them yeah. like, i'm gonna be so rich my cousin was like this guy looks like he's gonna be very rich you know so prior to that i wanted to just be a pilot and then i went to high school and then my mom was like oh then you have to go to school of aviation so you have to study um, elective mass. I was like, mm? <laughs> <laughs> and say that again. You know how that social media thing, yeah. like, rrr, rrr, like, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> elective mass. I'm like, okay, so I get to the class for the first time and they are teaching some stuff and I'm like, this is not for me. This is really not for me, you know. So I now dropped all of these electives and I said, okay, which is the easiest one? Because my uncle one time mentioned to me, you know, in high school, you just have to, you just have to pass. You have to pass, yeah. You just have to pass. It doesn't matter whether you read this or that. Because in uni, that's where you actually major. So I said, ooh. So I now went to um, CRS. Because it was the Bible studies. I was like, okay, I can, I can memorize study. all of these and I can pass. Okay. I don't need Plain, to. Bible study, okay. Yeah. So I did Bible studies, I did government, and I did geography. All right. And this was like very easy, easy for me to pass. Easy, easy, and easy. I actually do like economics. And my mom teaches economics. Oh, so even like, better. I had to pass that one. So yeah, in high school, when I was like writing like my final exams, I said to myself, I actually don't have to pass because I'm just going to be a musician. Because oh, okay. <laughs> I just was like, I was just looking for the easy way out. Do you okay. know what I mean? Yeah. I was just like looking to pass and that's it. And I just get into music. But yeah, I actually passed. I did well. I don't want to mention what I, my, my final grade, but I did well. Just get it like that. I mean, you don't want to mention because you don't want to show off or <laughs> you don't, don't want your, your mama well, to know so we don't you get you in trouble. Yeah, it depends. It depends because my mom will be like, yeah, get out. You didn't pass. But I know some of my hustlers will be like, ah, you don't try. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, basically. So we're going to keep that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I passed. I did well. So okay. yeah. Um, after high school, like in high school, that's when I knew I was going to make music. Okay. Guess what? In Ghana, there was this like load shedding because it's like energy problems, light problems. Yeah. So like that's, that's, you know that there's this day coming that you don't, you're not going to have light. You don't want to. Uh, so when we're going for evening studies and we know that that day there's going to be no light, everyone is ready to like have fun in class. Yeah. You know, so we're just out there just like having fun. And so I met my best friend in high school and a couple of friends where we would just like hit the desk. Boom, boom, boom. And then, and then other, so people could rap. So they will rap, and then I just now do Acorn. It's like, ooh, I'm getting tired in here. I just want to go home. This is like, start, start, you know, Acorn had this like whole, the way of singing where he would just go loud like, oh. So, so every time it's like me doing that. Yeah. And everybody was just like, yeah, 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 we're waiting for the chorus. Come on, come on, bring the chorus. <laughs> and that's just how. You got into really. I really got into music. Yeah. And when I finished high school, I just didn't look back. And you just went for it. Yeah. So talking about that, so <laughs> at the very beginning of your, of your career, what was the, the, some of the challenges that you faced when you, when you were at the first, you know, at the very beginning of your career? Yeah, I'm a big dreamer, you know. So it's like, even from the scratch, I felt like what I was doing was really dope. Like, I feel like my music is already, like, matching up to what we hear on radio. Okay. So why I, am I... I like the level of confidence. Yeah. I like that. So why am I not being played on radio? Hello. <laughs> you know, so I was in a group, 
with a guy called KD. And so I told him, you know what? Let's let's go to the radio station. It's like, bro, we don't know anybody there. Don't go there. Don't suck you. You know? Really? And I'm like, let's go let's, there first. Let's try. So I went in there and, and we already knew this like MCs, like this OAPs, we already knew they were like, no nonsense. Hey, you don't deserve to be here. Get out. Yeah. You know, that was the energy. But I said, let's just go there and tell them, like, let's, let's, let's tell them, like, we are good. Listen to our music. So I went in there. My guy was quiet. He was pinching me from the back, like, don't see it. Don't, don't, don't talk too much. You know? And I just spoke to the guy. I was like, yeah, my name is Fingers Camido. This is KD. We are a group. We make amazing music. I want you to listen to our music. He looked at me from top to down. It's like, you must have, like, what do you, you like? You must you know, think you, you all of that. You <laughs> understand? <laughs> so, wherever you gathered your confidence from, like, it's like, wow, you have some guts. So, it's like, he took it. It's like, you listen to it. Yeah. You know, so, like, three, four days later, I told my guy, let's go back and check whether he has listened. You know, we went back. <laughs> it's so funny. But, yeah, we went back there, and, yeah, he had listened. It's like, oh, you actually do do well. You know, so that was like, um, in, from the beginning, was like me just pushing for the mainstream stuff. Like okay. Pushing for the mainstream. It's like, okay, how can we get here? There's like a show happening. How can we get on the stage? Yeah, can we get, yeah. You know, so we stand there. It's like, bro, the other artists that are built, they are not yet here. Let us perform first. Yeah. You know, so one time they gave us an opportunity to perform. And then they actually saw that we're actually like pretty good. And that's just what started opening doors. Yeah. Yeah, for us. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you mentioned your name, Camilo. How did you come up with your name stage? So Camilo, in high school, um, in high school, I was like, actually going to register Facebook. I was going to like log into Facebook, mm -hmm. and you needed a first name and a and second name. Okay. You know, so I was like, my nickname was Fingers. So I don't know. One time, I think I overheard somebody, my mom or someone, just saying something, and I just, you know, sometimes it's not even close to what you heard. Yeah, yeah, you, you heard, heard something. Camilo, and... I was like, oh, that sounds cute, and the word cute is for me. So I was like, okay. So I now found how to spell it. I say C A M I D O H. So I was like, I was thinking of my second name. I was like, yeah, let me put Camilo there. I found a cute fingers Camilo. Boom. That's that just it. how I picked the name. Yeah. Okay. Something you heard, and then boom, we got a name. Yeah. So um, can a you share? A lot of people will ask me how you got the fingers, but I like that you didn't ask me. It's fine. No, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> can you share uh, a moment about your first uh, big break in the music industry? Big break? Mm. Yeah, big break would be um, for my lover in 2019. Okay. Yeah, 2018, December. So basically, I was in a group for like from 2008 in high school to like 2007. What was the name of the group? The group was called Bells. B-E-L-C-E. -E. Okay. Okay. And... Um, after high school, after uni and everything, we were like working together and everything. But one time, I realized that we started having like diverse like style, um, and yeah, yeah, opinions on how to run the thing. Okay, you know? that could be a problem. Yeah. So, um, and I'm heavy on like loyalty. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm like, let's stick with these people that we're working with because like they've really shown a lot of commitment. My guy also feels like let's move on to this other company because yeah. like yes, yeah, like this is what we need. Yeah. But I believe that look. I don't just leave people. That yeah, you were on, on the same page necessarily. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, we kind of like were disagreeing and then we just like had ways that afternoon. It broke my heart so much. That was like my first broken heart. Wow. Can't even lie. You know, so I, I was really like kind of like, I wouldn't say because I really did not understand the meaning of depression, but I guess it was mini depression what I was going through at that time because it helped me so much. I really thought I was going to make it in the group and everything, you know. So, um. I, I started to, I said to myself, like, I want to be a full package. At that time, I was kind of like rapping in a group and my guy was singing. Yeah. You know, so then now that he's gone, I didn't see how I was going to do performances by myself and all of that. So I taught myself how to like sing. So I was doing a bunch of covers. And then um, my former label, which is like 3FS, they was like a whole production house. So I went in there and I became a studio assistant. Okay. So I can learn how to record, I can learn how to produce, Learning. I can learn how to all Inside, of that. Yeah. Because I hate to not be able to do anything. Like something. I get it. I get it. You know, so I went in there and I learned and then my mom had this laptop that she gave me for uni. So after uni, I mean I just started using it for The production. laptop is here, might as well use it for music. Exactly. So I cleared everything off the laptop and I downloaded Cubase. And then and, and, and Fruity Loops. And I started to make beats. Okay. So basically if I had a hit song in a system. 
I'll come back home and I'll remake the beats. Yeah. And then I'll re-sing it. I'll do a cover of it. That's what I was doing. Okay. And I was just putting out videos with my, my friend's iPhone 5. Yeah. Back then. <laughs> back then. You know, and one time I had cold. And I had a cold and I was like, I'm just the type of person who just don't like anything to stop me. You know, so it was in the night. I was there alone. I didn't have a girlfriend. So um, I said, let me do something with my time. Because I wasn't feeling sleepy. My nose were blocked. So I made this beat and I was like, I can't wait to finish, like for the cold to go. So I can sing on it. Before I can sing. So I'll sing it now. So I made this record called For My Lover. And that record changed my life. Wow. Technically. So you could say thank you to the cold. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Facts. Like, I just, I think that even inspired me not to even, like, give in to anything. Yeah. You know, it's funny because then I saw, like, our brother, I was like, you know, uh, I saw him and I was like, he reminded me so much of myself. Yeah. Because he, you know, had, a, like, an issue with his leg or whatever. Like, he got dislocated mm -hmm. or whatever, but he's out here, like, still filming. Yeah. And when I saw him, he just took my mind back, back to the making of For My Lover. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love that story. Your music is a little bit of a blend of, you know, Afro pop, R&B, Afro beats. How do you approach, you know, creating that unique style, unique sound of yours? Um, first of all, like, I think the influence of Akon gave yeah. me the whole R&B base. Okay. You know, but I love to just be myself. So whatever I bring out, yeah. how you want to classify it. That's kind of you. Yeah. yeah. I love to just be myself on a record. Like, if I feel like going... Like, Razi, I'll do Razi. If I feel like being so soft and smooth with it, just gonna I'll go with keep it. it. I feel like I'm so blessed, I'm so versatile, like I can do anything. Mm -hmm. And so my friends started to call me like vocal god. I was like, why do you call me that? Why do you call me that? It's too much for me. You know, but I just, I, it's sunk in. I had to let it sink in. I was yeah. like, you are actually a vocal god because I can do anything, anything with my vocals, you know? Which is a blessing. Big blessing. So... You just, you know, mentioned Akon. Uh, what are some of the artists, you know, international or local that you eventually want to work with? Is Akon on the list or? It's funny how, like, I never really, like, wanted to, like, I just never really wanted to, like, make music with Akon. It was more like, sit there and let just inspire me. And just let, let, like, let, let, sit let, there let and just the talent sink like, in. Yeah. Just, just inspire me, that's yeah. it. You know, that's just what it has been for me. Yeah. Like, that's the truth. So I remember somebody asked me, like, so have you reached out to Akon? I'm like, bro, Akon manages one of my best friends. Like, Akon uh, manages... I almost want to say so. Yeah, I was like, I'm like, Akon manages my best friend. If I need Akon, like, I'll, 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 I know how to reach Akon. Yeah. You know, and plus, he's been a fan of my music, too. I, I'm just saying two great vocalists, like, why don't we make it happen? Uh, yeah. We... Yeah. I, I, I don't know how, why, but I'm just being honest, right? Mm -hmm. But I believe that when we do something, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be just... It's gonna be super, super amazing. Like yeah. I've seen Akon make some music. Like and I'm like, okay, 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 okay. If it's me, this is what I would love to touch up to it and whatever. Yeah. I know, but I just like I'm just blessed to have met like someone that, not met. I mean, I met him virtually, like you know. But I, I'm just I felt blessed. I was like, ooh, I feel like you're blessed beyond measure because then I've met every almost everyone that has inspired me. Like and then they now tell me that my music is on their playlist. Come on, you bro. Could just say. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Clap, Thank clap you. to that. That's, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I, I just sit back and get inspired by him. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess anybody on the list as far as, you know, collab and, you know, working with, yeah. whether it's a musician, a producer, do you have anybody yeah. in mind? A lot. A lot. Mostly when I'm on the spot, I forget a lot of things. But I'll tell you, mm -hmm. um, I definitely want to make music with Chris Brown. Okay, CB. Bruno Mars. Oh, I love me some Bruno. Um, her. Oh, okay. Um, I see where you're going with that. Yeah. Um, please, I just forget the names, but these are like there are people that I connect with my spirit. Yeah. Like, I actually like, yeah, this person. I want to make music with this person, you know. Um Tiki or Tyke. Yeah. Tyke. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's smooth with it. Tyke is French. Yeah, I yeah. love Tyke. He I, you know what? I, I guess I can see I can see a little a, a little duet up in here. Yeah, I can see Tyke. And um uh, um Jedru, Dedru. That do, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that as well. They have, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say they I'll have the same style, well. but they do a lot of work together. Yeah, they work together. I yeah. see that and I love yeah, that. Yeah, they, they work together a lot. That. So I feel like that is a power blend. Yeah, yeah. You know, because there's two great artists coming together. I saw them on um, African 
um, I think African Cup when it, when it did a yeah. performance. It was really amazing. And I'm proud. I almost want to say uh, shout out to the elephant. We are the champion. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Like, I, I love that, you know. I, I'm, I'm heavy on love. I'm heavy on unity. I'm heavy on us working together. So when I saw that, it was really, like, inspiring, you know. Well, you um, know what? I'm looking forward to see that. You know, and that's one thing that I always say. I wish that more anglophone and francophone artists were you know singing together i think yeah. that's what we miss in the you, you know sing, african though. you know music industry yeah i i, I met you see you see in door like i don't always mention the name pronounce the name well right but yeah angelic you see you see in door right you soon do yeah yeah he's like i made him on the plane one time mm -hmm. and we we like, in a band and all, like we we had a very beautiful conversation but i love making music with like people with like old minds yeah like, people who like sing matured music and like i was saying earlier for for, for us the angeliki joe the yusundu yeah. these are like iconic yeah. names in yeah. the music industry yeah. so automatically having that around is just you know yeah. it's just it's just a blessing. And i feel like i was born to be an icon yeah you know so i i i, I, I gravitate towards people i wish judy bucha was alive i'll make music with judy bucha yeah. okay do you know what i mean these yeah. are i love like Last night we met, I'll never forget. And I love, you love this. Is, and and, and these this are records that my auntie in, in Keta used, used to, to play. play. Yeah. Like we had just two or three cassettes in the house where play, tender side B, play, tender side, side A. A. It's like, you know, Senzo. Yeah. yeah, we used to listen to records like that. So, like, these are people I definitely want to make music with. Yeah. Yeah. Whiskey. I love whiskey. Whiskey? Yeah. Oh, okay. I love the new whiskey. The new whiskey. I mean, he's, he's good. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. He, he's, he's been putting a great body of work. So, yeah. like I said, I'm always here for a good collab. And, yeah. and I think, you know, African artists has, have a lot to, to, to show. We have a lot of talent. So, yeah. if we can bring that talent together, I, I, I'm all for it. Yeah. So, we're talking about music. Uh, can you um, take us on a little bit of a journey? Or how do you get to, like, writing, producing, you know, the lyrics, the melody? Like, what, was, what is the creative process behind your music? It's how I feel. How you feel? It's how I feel. Okay. I can literally make a, a song right now if I have my setup here. Like, getting inspired by him, getting inspired by just the things around us. I, can, I believe I can just make a very beautiful piece, like, in no time. Okay. I don't waste time in making music. If I'm not making it, I'm not making it at all. Okay. If I get in, I finish it. You get in and you just boom. And I also don't like people putting like societal rules on me. Like, yeah, you have to talk about this. You have to go a little bit. Don't tell me. Like, I just want to just... sing how I feel. Yeah. If I want to say love 10 times, I'll say love 10 times. And I believe that the listener will connect to love 10 times. Yeah. Like, you don't need to say, oh, you've already used this word. Oh, you know, this. No, no, no. I don't yeah. like the gimmicks. I, I don't like it. Okay. I, I, I make music how I feel anytime, any second. I'm like the best with it. That's how you keep it authentic. I yeah. That's how I make music. Like, I remember um, one of my friends, his mom and his dad, may, may, may his dad so rest in peace. He's late right now. Mm -hmm. But his mom and his dad were on the phone. He was on the phone with his mom. And his mom was telling him how things are going on in the home, right? And we was just like in a, um, in a in an apartment, like in, in uni. Yeah. And he was on the phone with him, and it was on speaker. So he was in the bedroom. I was in a, like where I used to convert it to my, it's just like the living room. I converted to my studio, and I was just there on my computer when he was talking. So I just like put one of the headsets this way. I was listening to him. I was making a beat. So when I was making it, I was already getting inspired. And I made a very beautiful song called Think Twice. Mm -hmm. And it just like, I made it in, in no time, like an hour. Wow. And all my friends was like, this is, this is a masterpiece. Let's put it out. And we never really got to put it out. But I just feel like I'll go back and record that song again. Yeah. So that's just how I am. Like once I'm connected, because I love my emotions to connect to situations. And then so you just go I out there and just it, boom. Yeah. And you get a hit. It's a hit. Okay. All right. it's... And every song I make is a hit. It's just that society will probably not see it like that, but it's actually a hit it's when it comes yeah. to emo, like human beings, like yeah. spirit. It's a hit. So you're just talking about, you know, that the hit. How do you feel about the receptions of your music in Ghana and overseas internationally wise? Like, yeah, in Ghana, it's really been like a very slow progress. Like, okay. Yeah, people. I don't do the usual thing. I'm very like in my in my world. Yeah. You know, so I'm not gonna excuse my language. I'm not gonna kiss nobody ass. Like, I'm not gonna. Chase, like, I'm not going to force vibes. Yeah. I'm okay. really just going to be, like, authentic with it, yes. you know? I remember a few times I tried to, like, force vibes or to, like, chase it. Like, I realized it just didn't end up well, you know? So I love to just stay in my world. Yeah. If I connect with you, you don't got to, like, say shit. Like, I love you, I love we, we, you. We're going to connect, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, 
in Ghana, it's just been like, yeah, yeah, who's this guy? He's behaving like a Nigerian. He's behaving like Congolese, whatever. Like, it's really? Like, People say it's like, that. It's like, I'm just foreign. I'm so foreign with everything. Yeah. Like, that's just how it is in Ghana. It's like, they see me as like, like, because, bro, I'm fly and my <laughs> attitude, everything is just foreign. You know, because. I have to say, yeah. if I didn't know that you were from Ghana, yeah. I could put you in Congo. Trust me. I, I could put you in Congo. And I'm the type of person, I'm like a chameleon, you know? You pull me in a room, I fit in. You fit like, in. I'll quickly just blend in. What, yeah. Like the, your tone, whatever, like your, your phonetics, I catch it quickly. Yeah. And that's just how I am. So I feel like that's just my blessing. So it took time for Ghana to really catch on. I remember when we put out the Formalava record. Yeah. People thought it was a Nigerian record. Really? So now I'm in a space and people are jamming and the girls are just like beautiful girls are just dancing to the song because it's playing on the radio. And I'm sitting right, right there. there. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I'm here, bro. Like, that's my song. <laughs> yeah, that's my song. And they don't even come to me like, you want to take photos with me? Like, I'm, I'm the star, bro. And they don't even know. Because like, I, I, don't, like, I don't look like the record, you know? Yeah. And so like, it was one of the problems we had, like trying to match the face with the record. Got it. Because the record is so good. Everyone is like, grab it. Like they're loving the record without knowing But they, they, don't, they don't know who's behind the record. And you're sitting right there. It's crazy. So it's like one of the hurdles we had to really like get over in the beginning. So that's just how it has been in Ghana. I still feel like that. It's like it's slowly catching it's up. It's catching up now. And I was just like, I was doing an interview recently and I was telling them that I believe that it's really going to take some time. But when they do, boom, I'm going to be like, like, and I love the fact that parents, not just the youngins, not just like the youth. Yeah. Parents come close to me and tell me, I love, especially, oh my God, when I see my mother's like, yeah, it's like, oh, I love your music and it hurt me so much. That is where I feel so blessed. And, and, and you know, when it comes to our culture, if, your, if mothers say, we, we love you, you know how much Period. I'm blessing, that's it. You know? Period. And so, that's where I feel like really fulfilled the most. Yeah. You know, because growing up, I really, my auntie loving music, they play the music over and over again. It doesn't matter. Yeah. They just want to hear that that's particular a good Judy Butcher over and over again. Yeah. You know, so... I believe that's just been my, my discernment. Like, that's just how people connect with me. So it's, 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 it's slow. I'm not yeah. going to lie, it's slow. But eventually, I'll be the biggest. Yeah. You talked about some, some, some of, the, of, of, of your memories. Can you share with us, like, a, a memorable, like, you know, milestone that you hit in your career where you were just like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm so, so proud of myself? Yeah. I'm trying to think. Because I'm the type of person who also does, I don't hold on to things. Okay. I don't, I, like, it's funny because then currently I have the biggest video on Ghanaian YouTube. Okay. But it doesn't even come as the first thing. It doesn't even come to me like, yeah, people are like, yeah, you know, you're the big, I'm like, yeah, 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 next one. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you just, I mean, you, you, you still, you know, you're building, you're there, you, you be creative, so you just don't want those moments to just stop you from not, you know, yeah. achieving and, more and more and, and more. I'll tell you this, like, I'll tell you this, like, the biggest thing for me it's just seeing people genuinely like loving my music. I can't even lie. Like, I don't even want to talk about I did this, I did that, I have that. Like, that is not even the aim for me. You just want people to vibe it's with the your music. The impact that I make yeah. on human beings, their yeah. souls, you know? So when you see children wanting to take pictures with you because they, I, you know, kids don't fake it. No, that, <laughs> trust me, kids don't fake it. We know All that. All these don't fake it. Yep. It's like they love you, they love you. Yeah. They love you, even if you're a criminal, like, like, you know, they'll call you close to them. Like, they want to help you because they love you. Like, it's genuine. Do you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. so um, that's how I feel. I'm like, that's the kind of person I am. So I'll say to you that the, the, the greatest thing I feel like I've done is impacting people. Um, for example, I met a woman, you know, and she said, your, your star, I love you. Like, I want to have lunch with you. So I went out there, me and um, Hova, we went to have lunch with this woman. And one of the questions she asked me was, um, so with the fame that you have, I'm like, eh, I'm not famous now. <laughs> like, I'm not yet famous in my head, yeah. right? It's like, you're famous. What do you want to do with your fame? How do you want to help society with your fame? Mm -hmm. I look at the woman, I was like, how are you even saying this to me? Because people don't know me. They know the music, but they don't really they know don't really me. Know and it's just like a couple of music, like songs out. You know, so... I went back home. Yeah. And I was thinking about it. Because she's like, yeah, think about it. Think about it. Do something. Do something for people. Then she called me. Like, I called her back. It's like, auntie, I don't know. We so I don't know what I want to do. Like, but, you know, if you really want me to do something, I guess, like, I was raised by a single mother. So maybe something for single mothers. So I was able to, like, narrow it down to, like, mothers who, like, delivered in the hospitals. 
but are unable to come back home because probably like there's a there's a complication they have to pay for some extra surgery or hospital bills they're unable to settle it so she said yeah that'll be a brilliant thing so she invested a lot of money for us to just do a show so we invited a lot, a lot of people people bought tickets for like i think 200 cities 300 cities and so forth and then we just turned all the proceedings like um, um, yeah from that to um go to the hospital so we went it's to like amazing. 37 military hospital and then we bought a lot of like and we had a lot of sponsors too people came to sponsor us like baby diapers nice and all yeah. of that and I'll, I'll say to you that that's one of like the iconic things that i have done with my music yeah. that's one of the things that i've done that i'm proud of and i want to re keep repeating you know even till now when people when i see people in situations i just want to be able to help and hope i'll be like you can't help everybody now you go broke. Do you understand? Like, at the end of the day, we just, like, work a little bit and we help people a little bit. But, yeah, I love to just, like, impact lives with my music. You pretty much answered my... I had some, some questions for you for social impacts, but you pretty much, you know, yeah. answer those questions as far as, like, if you have, like, how do you use your platform to, you know, affect your community? And also, if you have causes and charities and yeah. uh, particular, you know, passions outside of the music yeah. that you, you know, that your heart is close to. So, you... Yeah almost pretty much answer yeah. those, those questions and also i love kids yeah i love kids so much <laughs> i love kids i just love to see I, I i guess when i was like growing up my um mom's friends mm -hmm. they would they loved me so much like i don't know what it was about me but they loved me so much so every uncle or friend of my mom coming through they bringing something for me or they're leaving they're giving me money it's like it's really been a lot of like favor for me growing up so i kind of like yeah gravitated towards kids and oldies i guess so um yeah i, I was telling my manager one time i was like you know from when i want to do my maiden concert mm -hmm. i want it to be very big where i want it to be like three days where one day is mainly for kids come out there because i used to have like a colored hair come out there with color your hairs take photos like do beautiful th you know all this yeah. stuff that they love to do yeah pool whatever like let's have a day for the kids you know, make sure they have pe people there to take care of them, you know. And then the next day is, like, maybe us going to, like, these communities and helping them. And then the third day is for, like, gang, you know, doing a concert for the Listen, gang. we go from the king yeah. to the gangster. So <laughs> I that's, like that. <laughs> like, these things are the things I would love to do. Yeah. I don't, I don't see anything outside that. Like, I want to I be there for these kids. Mm -hmm. And I want to be there for, like, these oldies. That's it. Which, I mean, it's good. I mean, let's say our young generation, they, 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 they need us. They need, you know, yeah. uh, figures to to see that you know you could dream big you can yeah. you, you can get out of those you know yeah. uh ghetto if i can say that yeah. and you make you can make something of yourself whether yeah. you're a doctor a musician so i yeah. think it's it's amazing that you want to impact you know the kids as they're going to you know come after or, yeah. after us and you know keep building the the yeah. you know the continent yeah